Ever wondered why penises are generally darker than the rest of the body? It's a question that's puzzled many. The answer lies in the skin's cells, specifically the melanocytes. These cells produce melanin, which gives color to our skin, hair, and eyes. When a boy hits puberty, the surge of hormones stimulates these melanocytes, causing them to produce more melanin. This results in the penis becoming darker than the rest of the body. Let's delve a bit deeper. The human penis, like other parts of the body, undergoes several changes during a man's life. One of these changes is in its size. It might surprise you to know that the penis stops growing when a man is in his early 20s. This is around the same time when most men reach their full adult height. So, just like you can't expect to grow taller after a certain age, don't expect your penis to either. Moving on to a slightly more delicate topic, prostatic congestion, or as it's colloquially known, blue balls. This uncomfortable condition is caused by trapped blood in the penis and can lead to a feeling of heaviness or achiness. But don't worry, it's not a serious condition and can be relieved by a warm shower, aspirin, or an orgasm. Lastly, let's talk about that line or seam you can see on the underside of the penis. This is actually a developmental feature that forms when the fetus is still in the uterus. In men, the seam encloses the urethra along the length of the penis. In women, this seam becomes the inner lips of the vagina. It's fascinating how the same embryological structure can develop into such different adult forms in men and women. Intriguing, isn't it, how these features that are often overlooked carry so much biological significance? From the biological to the cultural, did you know there's an annual penis festival in Japan? Yes, you heard right. Every spring, the city of Kawasaki in Japan becomes the center of attention for one of the most unique festivals in the world, the Kanemara Matsuri. This Shinto fertility festival is a celebration that's as thought-provoking as it is entertaining. And the highlight of the festival is the procession of a giant two-and-a-half-meter wooden penis, carried through the streets by locals, but that's not all. The festival is also filled with phallus-shaped tokens from lollipops to keychains, all symbolizing prosperity and fertility. Even the food isn't exempt from the theme, with vegetables carved into suggestive shapes. The Kanemara Matsuri is a testament to Japan's diverse cultural heritage and its ability to embrace topics that are often seen as taboo elsewhere. Who would have thought that a penis could be celebrated in such a grand and unique way? Switching gears, let's delve into a sensitive topic. Did you know Eastern Europe has the highest abortion rate in the world? With 43 abortions per 1,000 women, it's a region grappling with a significant issue. But this is not just an Eastern European concern. Each year, globally, there are approximately 208 million pregnancies. Out of these, a staggering 41 million, or 20%, end in abortion. What's more, about half of these abortions are carried out illegally, adding a dangerous dimension to an already challenging situation. In the United States, the situation is also complex. Approximately 51% of U.S. adults believe that abortion should be legal in all or most cases, while about 43% believe it should be illegal most or all of the time. These figures have remained fairly stable over the past two decades, illustrating the deeply entrenched views on this issue. But when we dig deeper into the U.S. data, we find some striking racial disparities. Black women, for instance, are at least five times more likely than white women to have an abortion. In fact, it's estimated that around 1,876 black babies are aborted every day. Diagnoses in utero also play a significant role in abortion rates. It's estimated that approximately 90% of fetuses diagnosed with Down syndrome in utero are aborted. This statistic raises difficult ethical questions about the value we place on different kinds of lives. These statistics reveal a complex global landscape when it comes to abortion. The history of abortion is as old as civilization itself. Did you know that ancient physicians recommended smearing the uterine lining with goose fat as an abortifacient? Indeed, the methods employed by our forebears to terminate pregnancies were nothing short of astonishing. Physicians like Pliny the Elder, who lived in the first century AD, wrote about what they called superstitious methods of abortion. These involved crossing over the egg of a crow or the menstrual blood of another woman. An ancient Egyptian papyrus even suggests using crocodile feces as an abortifacient. Other ancient physicians went a step further, recommending a concoction of mashed leek and celery, boiled honey, and even mouse dung. 
But it wasn't all superstition and strange potions. Surgical abortion was also well known in the ancient world. Texts such as diseases of women, superfetation, and on the excision of the fetus describe a surgical tool called an embryos for actis, which means embryo slayer. This tool was used to perform surgeries to end pregnancies, showing that even in the ancient world there was an understanding of the physical aspects of pregnancy and how to terminate it. Fast forward to the 20th century, we see societal and economic circumstances having a significant impact on abortion rates. During the Depression era, for instance, the number of abortions in the US rose dramatically when pregnancy threatened a woman's job. The controversy surrounding abortion took center stage with the landmark Roe v. Wade case. The plaintiff, Norma McCorvey, known as Jane Roe in the case, sought to challenge the constitutionality of Texas's abortion laws. Interestingly, McCorvey later became a pro-life advocate and founded Roe No More, an organization that provides counseling for women seeking an abortion. Even the dark times of Nazi Germany had its abortion policies. Women considered good stock were prohibited from obtaining abortions, while abortions were permitted for those deemed hereditarily ill. From ancient practices to modern controversies, abortion has always been a topic of intense debate.